Today on Sister to Sister, we are asking some great questions like what defines a good life? And am I in control of my own life or am I just a puppet in God's hands? Oh, you're not a puppet, you're real. And you're real and we are real excited that you're watching today. Hi and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are five women just like you and we love to come together and just break apart scripture, ask questions, learn from each other and hopefully grow up together. And we have a special guest here today. We have Tiffany yes. sitting in. <laughs> Tiffany Gilbert, you have some big shoes to fill. I do. <laughs> but, but like I said before, you're right there. So, <laughs> And I have some big shoes to fill as Kathy, our sister, is traveling the world and being awesome. And you know she never, ever misses being with you. So let's dive in. Today, are you ready, girls? Yes, yes. ready. All right, this, these are some great, like yeah. meaningful life questions. Mm -hmm. Question number one, how do you strike a balance between acknowledging the pain and challenges of life while still holding on to your faith? And then how much do I maintain hope and not questions God's love and care for me? Tiffany, I'm gonna yeah. go to you for this one. Yeah, you know, when you're going through heavy challenges mm -hmm. in life, mm -hmm. you know, and things that rock your faith, sometimes it's hard not to question, Lord, you know, I mean, you question, hey, why am I going through this, first of all? But then sometimes it's hard not to say, well, God, do you love me? Are you there? Are you with me? You know, and I, I, I had a, a moment like that. And I just wanted to take time to really share this. It's kind of a personal moment that I had, but I had a heart attack a couple of years back. And, you know, I don't know why. We still don't know why um, in terms of, you know, medically. And I wondered, I questioned, well, why is this happening to me? What's going on? What's happening? And a couple things, just to make a long story short, um, I went into that operating room and uh, just scared, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a natural thing, you're just, you're scared, you don't know what's gonna happen. You never thought that that was gonna be right, the case right. when you went in there. And so it was amazing because as I began, even just to pray quietly, when I was in that operating room and the, the doctor was kind of preparing the, you know, the stuff, the nurses, and I know what they were doing, they were trying to get my mind off of everything, but yeah. they said to me, they said, hey, listen, they were asking me a whole bunch of questions. Well, what do you and your husband do? And so I shared, and she said, she came down to the table, she said, isn't that just like God? He sent two nurses that are crazy about Jesus. Hallelujah. And so I just said, wow, Lord, you're with me. Lord, you yeah. love me. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of everything, you know, I'm a big Romans 8, 28 person. Yes. And all things work together. No matter what you're going Absolutely. through in life, all things Absolutely. work together for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. You know, so you have to know, and the second scripture that came to mind was John 16, 33, and it says, these things, I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace in the world you have tribulation but yes. take courage yes. I have overcome he's Hallelujah. overcome those challenges he's overcome that sickness that you're dealing with he's overcome those just deep dark emotional places mm -hmm. that you've been in so I would just encourage anybody that's going through this don't question God's love for you mm -hmm. he loves you he loves you more than you could ever imagine yes I would say question God's love for you. Mm. I would say question it because he will answer with his love. Mm. God is real mm. and he doesn't mind us asking questions. Like I think Jesus was a question asker. He asked questions. I'm a question asker and I think we, God knows we're real people. We're not robots. He knows that we have questions and his word is not gonna return void. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he allows us to ask questions and he's gonna answer back. Like, I think, I think so many like churches and like Christians are afraid to like say to people, like ask questions, like 
ask the questions, he will answer back. Like I, I thought of another scripture, Matthew 7, 7 through 8, ask and will be give, given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. So if you are feeling the doubts, if you are, you know, if you're going through the pain and you're feeling, ask God, cry out to him. Like David did it in the Psalms. He always was crying out and saying like, God, you know, like what, why am I going through this? Like ask the questions. And, and, you, and I, think that's, I think that's the real part, right? I think it's you're being real and human. Yeah. But I have found you have to be careful because it can turn into a very slippery slope yeah. where it's like, yes. God, you don't love me. You're not there. And they turn yes. the opposite way yes. and they just turn their heart away from God. Right. So I think the real is good, process the real, yeah. but then go back to the truth of yes. the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just thinking, I'm listening to the two of you and obviously I agree, but the thing of it is, is the questions about striking that balance, mm -hmm. you know? That's good. Yeah. And, and yeah. I find that sometimes for me personally, when I have walked through difficult situations and as I have helped others go mm -hmm. through different, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. situations, um, that can be a challenge. But one of the th common threads or a consistent thread that I have found is that there are lots of times we are blessed enough to know what God's plan is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we don't always know the way he's going the to way. fulfill it. Mm -hmm. And that's where your faith kicks in. Mm -hmm. And so faith is, you know, when I don't know, being able mm -hmm. to rest mm -hmm. in God. And so, yes, I, many a times, you know, um, I definitely agree with you, obviously, you know, um, that we can have that, take that liberty to question mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God. But wisdom also mm -hmm. says, I have to watch that. I don't go down that slippery slope of yes. le letting doubt mm -hmm, come in mm -hmm. um, because doubt will usher, give way to fear mm -hmm. and fear is very paralyzing. Mm -hmm, yes. And most of the times what we tend to do when we go through things, um, is we run from God instead of running to Him. Yeah. Yeah. And so that balance, I think, is what happens. That's good, helps that's us. good. Yeah, While no. y'all are talking, I'm, I'm picturing like that childhood playground, is it called a oh, seesaw? Or yes. 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 And it's like this tension of, of you know, acknowledging the pain mm -hmm. that I'm yes. in and what I'm going through, Roxanne, mm -hmm. and then like holding on to my faith yes. at the same time. And I've gone down that slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and it's good. not a fun place to be, That's but right. I'm going to tell you, there are so many people out there mm -hmm. that it's like you can't hold on and the slide is going down. Yes, right. And then you're at the bottom of the pit and there's nowhere else to go. And uh, Corey Ten Boone's sister said to her, there is no pit mm -hmm. so deep that God is not deeper sti uh, si uh, still. still. Wow. And 1 Corinthians, Paul says to his followers, I despaired of life itself. I thought I was going to die. I was at the bottom of the pit. Then I remembered, even if I die, God raises from the dead. That's right. I mean, God always has an answer. He does. He rescues. And if you can't catch yourself in God's word before you go down, he is down there yes. also. What does the Psalm say? If I rise to the heavens, you're there. If I go down to Shoal, you're there. He is there. Yes. Wow, Amen. Roxanne, I've, I'm getting my hallelujah napkin. <laughs> well, I'm coming to you for this mm -hmm. question. You know, how much do you share with your children mm -hmm. when you're going through this faith crisis? You know, um, so obviously I see how the two tied together, the yes. first question in this, in this one. And I, I love the fact that we're getting ready to address that because mm -hmm. I think sometimes we tend to isolate children trying to protect them right. when it is yes. a, actually it is a great teaching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tool mm -hmm. um and so um i thought this one it said something about that no that was on a, another question sorry um but you know I, i'd say as much as their eyes see and i'll explain that and mm -hmm. as much as you feel their little spirit can process mm -hmm. yeah that's good so that's good. um i'll be the first to say children don't get a junior holy ghost However, their level of understanding and comprehension is that usually equivalent with their age. And so just like anything that you try to teach your children, you have to teach it to them on the level that they can comprehend and understand. So I, I think sometimes when things happen, and I think 
people that are in ministry, we have to be very mindful that we don't create doctrines for things we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And we do that even when we're not talking to children. You know, we can get a question right now and if I don't understand it, I can give way to the pressure of feeling like, well, I got to answer this and I got to come up with a spiritual instead of like, you know what, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know and that's okay. Yes. You know, I serve the God who knows, mm -hmm. right. you know, he's all wisdom. He has all the knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. and some things I don't have an understanding on. I got to seek the face of God. Yeah. So I think it's a great opportunity to teach your children about how to seek God for an answer. It's a great opportunity to teach children how to journal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how to begin to hear from God, mm -hmm. how to follow mm -hmm. his leading. So I just feel that when you're dealing with a child, um, the word of God says children are as mighty arrows in our hands. Yes. And so sometimes as a parent, I need spiritual archery lessons, mm -hmm. you know, so that when we shoot them, they won't miss That's their intended right. target, That's right? That's so true. Come on, That's yeah. good. That's yeah, good. my kids have, uh, <laughs> hey, they've shot me with some of those arrows. <laughs> Wow. Talk about transparency. I just mentioned about Paul. He said, I don't want you to not be aware. I'm going through feeling like I'm going to die. Paul said that to his spiritual children. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My kids at this point, they're all adults and man, I love them. They tell me the truth. They're honest and God bless the day that they keep doing it. When my son was, uh, what was he when my father passed away? He was like uh, eight, about eight years old. And he was one of the closest grandchildren to my dad. We lived across the road. My dad was always there taking him to everything. And he said to me, Mom, I don't know, understand why everyone is so sorrowful when Grandpa is in heaven. He's seven or eight years old. Okay, so fast forward, he's adult and 30-something. Uh, and he says to me, Mom, you're supposed to be this great Christian woman. Why are you fretting all the time? Whoa. Oh. You know what? Oh, and no, it was God. like a spiritual wow. boom. Yeah. What mm. am I showing my kids? Yeah, I can rock. fret, but I can tell them too, God is the strength of my life. Be transparent, mm -hmm. but go before the Lord yeah. before you're transparent or try to. I don't always do it, so we're okay. We're in a club. Um, try to give that, as Flo said, that balance. I'm fretting, but God is the strength of my life. Yeah. He is my portion forever. And at least if you speak those words and don't walk in it yet, you can begin to bring life into your children instead wow. of heartache. That's good. That, that was good. is so good. I had the same aha moment, uh, you know, Tiffany, when my son said, Mom, cast your care. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't even say anything. He what could just, he say? could feel the vibe. Yeah, right, yes. right, right. He's like, I yes. feel like whatever you're doing is not casting your care and it's not peace. And he could feel it. He could feel yeah. it. Yeah, wow. absolutely. See, they do, they do. They do feel it. And I mean, you know, you said about your, your kids being older. Well, my kids are pretty young still. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm very careful about what I share with them and when I share what I share with them. So I totally agree with both of you ladies and what you're saying, even about the balance of balance is key because you know you could use it as a teaching moment right, hey this right. is what's going on but this is what we do this is how we show the love of God to somebody this is you know how we respond to this you know so I think the balance is key and I think it's really important not to make your crisis their crisis yes. oh, that's good. as that's well good. That's you know good. what I mean so yes. you just can't because yeah. they don't know how to compartmentalize no, they don't know how to respond yes. when they're that young it's like no they already have enough weight of the world on their shoulder right now. You know, they don't have to deal with my stuff and our crisis. Right, right. So, you know, mm -hmm. one of the mistakes that I made though, Tiff, going along with that mm -hmm. is when my children were younger and if something went wrong, especially or went awry within the church mm -hmm. even and within those <laughs> dynamics, I would try to cover it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That yeah. was not I, a good I thing. I noticed because too when, when they... there's single moms, oh, I'm so sorry, Flo. That's okay, go ahead. When single moms that I know yes. and they, 
use their child as that kind of spouse, mm -hmm. that yeah. sounding yeah. board, Ooh, and the child, nice. like you so said, good. can't process, process all that, that. emotion right. mm -hmm. when mom is supposed to be the strength. That's yeah. right, that's yeah. right, yeah. And they end up acting out, I feel like. Yes. You know, it'll come out some way. Yeah. If they can't process that, it'll come out, whether it's in school, their school, whether it's at home, whether it's within their front, it's gonna come out because it has to. And if you do like I did, we'll recover things mm -hmm. when they see the truth. Now I've taught them to yes. cover. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yes. That's well, good. that good. is a whole message right there. That Actually, is. those are two mm -hmm. really important points mm -hmm. on this mm -hmm. subject mm -hmm. of, you know, mm -hmm. being honest, mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. real, That's but right. mm -hmm. being wise as Amen. well, yes. knowing when to address because mm -hmm. that is how they learn. Corey, you know, mm -hmm. my mom looked at me one time and she said, Amy, like you can't hide the, the struggles that you're going through with your daughter. They don't need to know all the details. Mm -hmm. They don't need to, mm -hmm. that's her testimony and her story to tell in her time, mm -hmm. but you can't act like nothing's going on, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Do you agree? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> My story. Like, My story. Like, it's time up. Or, yeah. you know. <laughs> tie it all together. But you know what? I'm going to do that right now because when we come back after this quick break, we're going to ask a real question like what defines a good life? Don't you want to know? I want to know. See you in a minute. <laughs> Are back and we haven't stopped talking and I'm surprised that Corey stopped talking. On the, she hasn't done that in 10 years but um, I'll just take it as an initiation test and I pass the test and here we are in the second segment of this show and thanks for tuning in. Now let's get to the, the good juicy question of like what defines a good life? Flow. <laughs> I don't the have no oh. <laughs> Going over to flow. <laughs> you know, I, I really, I, I love this question because I think in this day and age, so many of us are really caught up on what's a good life. Right. Um, um, what's a spiritual source? How do I live my life? How do I, you know, there was a time that the Judeo-Christian principles were pretty much across the board. People tried to live them and go by them. And now things are a little bit different, yeah. but mm -hmm. coming from that perspective of um, me, of course, being a, a believer, um, mm -hmm. my perspective on it is revelate, revel, somebody talk to me, revel, revelation. <laughs> <laughs> and realization <laughs> of that revelation. And I think, you know, um, that good life is, what is the life that God has planned yeah. for me? Mm -hmm. And then walking out the realization mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. which comes into me having a greater understanding of my creator himself, mm -hmm. what he wants from me, what he requires of me, yes. um, what he commissions me to do. And I think that a lot of people get caught up in other explanations and philosophies of what a good life is. Mm. And it actually yeah. becomes a bondage yes. because yeah. you can't live mm. up to it. Yes. You know, yes. like if I see myself yeah. as God, mm -hmm. then who do I answer? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I got That's a lot good. going on That's internally. Yeah. And wow. so I really believe having that revelation and then then I also have the help of the Godhead to help mm. me bring it into realization. That's yeah. true. Ooh, that is so that's true. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have? Yeah, I think that that revelation piece that we we got there, we got yeah, there, we got, we got, got there. <laughs> it's so true. You know, I think it, it it does maybe mean practically speaking different things for different people. Yeah. You know, but I I thought about this and I said, you know, if I want to know about the good life, I need to seek the person who gave me life. That's right. Come on. Now. You know, Come and on. I think about That's Matthew 6:33. Mm -hmm. You know, seek ye first mm -hmm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things. And I and I just feel like when we seek him first, mm -hmm. 
then all the rest, like all of your desires, direction, wisdom, that's insight, right, that's right. all of that's that right. comes oh, from good. that. Yeah. You know, so I just feel like, irregardless, if you're like, you know, I want to be a gymnast, that would be a good life for me. If I want to be this, if I want, you start there. Mm -hmm. And then that'll help you kind of navigate all the other That's stuff. Good. That was you good. Know, so. so good. I think it boils down to recognizing what you have that what you have to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So a good life That's looks good different point. for different yeah. people, where mm, you know, different point. circumstances, different yes, where yes. you live in the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's gonna look different for lots of people, but recognizing what you have yes, to be grateful mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. joy that supersedes your circumstances. Um, and then, you know, I think of the verse in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, and these three remain, faith, mm -hmm. hope, and love, Amen. but the greatest of these is love. Yeah. And, you know, ha you know, a good life, if you have love, and everybody can have love because mm -hmm. God is love. Yes. Love, yes. you know, defines a good life. Yes. Ooh, yes. His agape love, agape. his sacrificial yes. love, his That's unconditional right. love. Yeah. Yeah. And what I felt was, I, the Lord re keeps repeating to me, and I think it's Luke 18, yes, let me look. When the Son of Man comes back, will he find faithfulness? Mm -hmm. She talked about, you know, faith, hope, and love. Mm -hmm. And will he find faith? Will you be faithful wherever you are? Corey said, wherever you are in the world, whatever your circumstances are, will you have love? Will you be faithful to him no matter what he takes you through? Because those were Jesus' words. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. That's good. Very I mean, good. a good life, I think people are trying to work to achieve that, and you're not going to find it outside mm -hmm. of him, outside mm -hmm. of God. And to her point yeah. about what she was mm -hmm. saying about love and it looking different for different people, you know, I've been to a particular country and we're there and the house is made of, you know, just stones, dirt, mm -hmm. there's no walls, yes, there's no yes, door, sure. there's no, you know, and yet. The joy. So true, yes. that is so true. It, yes. it, like when you go to third world countries, mm -hmm. yeah. you see that and there's yes. like a joy, a happiness. It's so yeah. true. Mm -hmm. So true. Okay, Amen. Roxanne. Yes, Am ma I in control of my own life? I know you like control. Oh, <laughs> oh, or, or, or am I just a puppet in God's hands? You know, I like what Jesus said to Martha, and that was in Luke 10. Martha, you're worried about a lot of things. That lady was in control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. She was good. I want to live. I want to live with her and have her cook for me. And, but you know, with Martha, you got to help her out. That's so true. But Jesus said to her, "Mary chose the better part." Yes. We have a choice in life mm -hmm. to try to stay in control of the gift mm. God gave Martha to serve and hospitality. That is an awesome gift because it makes people feel so good and welcome. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that we have a choice to follow him first, mm -hmm. be refreshed by him, mm -hmm. sit at his feet. Mm -hmm. So no, are we puppets? Jesus said, Martha, Mary chose mm -hmm. the better part. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna control you, Martha, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna ask you to choose the better part. Yeah, yeah. that's good. So good. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, that, that analogy of the puppeteer to me is very mechanical and doesn't really give way to the character mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard some analogies that I can agree with a little better, like the conductor mm -hmm. making use of all the different instruments mm -hmm. and, and, you know, just a beautiful symphony. Um, and so, you know, when I think of that, I kind of, want to steer away from looking at God like that because mm. he works in conjunction mm -hmm, mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, us. You know, good. I get yes. to play uh, a part. Mm -hmm. And as the, we call it the blessing chapter in Deuteronomy, if I do this, he'll do that. If I yes. do that, you know, so working together. I used to run puppets in the kids' ministry growing <laughs> up. That was, it was called Caraway Street, and I helped build the set. It was awesome. And, you know, but a puppet has no life That's without right. that person That's right. controlling That's right. it. That's right. You know, we have life. Yes. It actually says in him mm -hmm. we live and right. move 
and have our being. Yes. And he is the very definition of life. And we want you to experience that life with Christ That's today. Good. So give us a call at 888-665-4483. We want to hear from you. We want to hear questions from you. And we'll be right back after this break to go over a scripture and to pray for you. We talked about some great questions today. And as you know, we always end sister to sister with a scripture. And today's scripture is from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse eight. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I remember when I was a little girl, Anytime I would go somewhere that was unfamiliar or scary, it was a new place for me. Whenever my dad was with me, I remember that fear just melting away. Put my hand in his and he would walk before me or beside me. And I just wasn't afraid anymore. I just knew that when he was there, he was in charge and he would take care of all the details. And that's how it is with the Lord with us. He is always with us. He goes before us, beside us. We have that promise in scripture that he is there with us. And maybe you didn't have a good relationship with your earthly father. Or maybe you didn't have a relationship at all, but you have a heavenly father that, ha that promises that he will have a relationship with you if you just accept it and he will go before you and beside you, and he will secure a place for you so that you do not have to be afraid or discouraged. So today, run to the Father. Run to his love. You're gonna find hope. You're gonna find your purpose. You're gonna find a great life in Christ. And we always like to end sister to sister with the scripture, as iron sharpens iron, so does one woman or another sharpen each other. We'll see you next week on Sister to Sister.